Now today's project, we wanted to work on the headlight shell for the MT-09, and I had thought about this and done some some homework on it with John, making some, I guess you would call them Photoshop little renditions with a blue headlight shell, a dark uh, blue headlight shell, a silver one, and whatever. But we finally arrived at, after back and forth, back and forth, and thinking about it, the final decision was that this is one of the final pieces of the puzzle too, is we were going to paint it gloss black, and today was a great painting day. Now today I have one more little detail to take care of on the MT-09. It looks like a day I'll be able to do it time-wise. The weather looks like it's cooperating, and we're kind of closing in on having that project to, to where we're ready for the summer riding season, hopefully. Then we'll start changing the tires and getting some of the other bikes ready. But I did want to try to get the last few little details on the MT-09 done within the next week or so. Now it's always easier for me to do this kind of work when a bike's up on a center stand and it's level, it's not laying off on its side. Now a lot of the time I spent customizing this bike, I spent on the windshield area, the basically the front end of the bike. And this area here, I have a lot of time involved in it and today's project is I want to take this part off. There's actually two parts because it does go around the front here, it hooks on. Those two parts I have to take the windshield off. Take those two parts out and paint them gloss black. And I think the gloss black, at, I've gone back and forth. Other people have told me painted blue, painted silver. We've made Photoshop things. And just like getting rid of the bolts and the scoops, I think that's going to be another small detail. But this whole bike is nothing but small details. The only real big detail are the wheels and polishing the exhaust. Everything else is kind of one day small projects. I do like the way the mirrors worked out a lot better than the the ones that were flat black that just added one more little touch that i like i like shiny black and that's what got me motivated to get this headlight painted too and turbo steve's job is over there drying an extra couple days dale's i think dale's daughter or his daughter-in-law is cutting some decals for the other two parts before we can shoot the clear on that but, and again, there's a lot of gloss black parts on these bikes that are not gloss black from the factory. The helmet, the headlight helmet, this, the instruments. Every time I add something gloss black, I like the bike better. And needless to say, on a, the, the Ninja restoration, everything was flat black. I don't, I don't think there was 10 painted parts on this whole bike when we did it. And it's a whole different bike now. And you can really see your reflection in that black paint. But the first step, feed the barnyard animals, have an extra cup of coffee, see what Karen's got cooking, and then we'll come back and pull that part off. Fish, are anybody hungry today? Are you guys not hungry? I had pizza last night. It's hard to believe they don't look that hungry this morning. It's hard to believe. I'm always hungry. Now, anytime I work on a bike, I want it to be clean. I don't want to work on something all full of dust and grease and whatever. Taking a windshield off, easy peasy. We've done this so many times in the course of making those brackets. I can kind of do this in my sleep. Now, as I take each one apart, I cleaned each part, made sure I put the bolts with the part because a lot of these bolts are very similar but not exactly the same. I wanted to have all the bolts go right back in the same spot. And one of the bolts, in fact, on this has a shim underneath it. And little by little by little, it's brought back a lot of good memories of making these brackets. All of it is on previous videos. And it was a very subtle change to the motorcycle to make these brackets because, well, the stock brackets had the windshield just facing up a little bit more than I wanted to. And these brackets, even though they took a long time, they're very adjustable and I can get the windshield to lay back the way I want it so aesthetically it's pleasing to me. That was all worthwhile. That was time well spent. Now, I wanted to, and there's six screws that hold this assembly on. There's one tricky part of this, if you're not aware of it, and you start pulling up on that middle part. The middle part is in two bushings. You've got to get all the screws out, and some of these screws are really in there. They're, they're these uh, they're made for plastic, and they feel like they're, they're a lot stronger than you would think they would be, but... And there they are, and they really do hold the parts together pretty well, even with a high vibration part. Now, this is the tricky part. You gotta pull this up just enough to release the wire that's attached to the back. 
I try to take some still pictures, but you can't really see it here as well as I would have liked. But you don't want to pull on that connector and break that little tab. That's another, th there's the tab right in there. You can just wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it. You got to really be patient. Maybe put a drop of WD-40 on it. I don't know. This one came off without any event, but without breaking it, of course. But if you broke it, you'd have to figure some way of getting those wires up there because otherwise they'd be rubbing on stuff. And then little by little, there's two rubber grommets. There's two screws on the bottom and two rubber grommets, six screws all together. And then you got to very carefully do it. It's just like the side piece, the side scoops. Yamaha has this all figured out with a lot of wiggling and a lot of woggling and little by little you get the bottom screw out and little by little by little you can just there you go and then you got it and then success there you go so as I'm always prone to do I lay out some clean microfibers and I put the bolts the screws and the parts in the sequence I've taken them off and these things snap off by the way and you got to be real careful there's little tabs when I had them off and painted it. I remember there was little, little tricky tabs. You don't want to just pull on it. Anyway, so what we're going to do is now this part, I'll take these off. This part's going to get gloss black. A certain amount of this gets gloss black, but I don't want to have up under the windshield gloss black. So I have to find out how far up that's going to go. And I try to keep all the screws in order, keep the wrenches out I need just to make putting it back together. Is I don't need to make this trickier than it is. It's a little tricky getting this out, especially that wire. That by the way, that wire is on. It snaps in there, and it. It took me a while to wiggle it and wiggle it. I didn't want to force it and break that little tab. So, just maybe that's one trick you could pick up off of this. But this is the way I do it because I don't do this every day like a professional mechanic. And when I go to put it back together, I'll start at this end and work my way right back. The last thing will be the windshield. So we've had these parts apart before. They press into a rubber bushing. There's screws around the back of the headlight. This gets snapped in underneath. So it's pretty much a reverse. When we put this back together, it'll just be reversed. And the good news about this whole thing, if we don't like the way this looks gloss black, we'll just paint it flat black again. But I always like adding some gloss black to the bike. Anything gloss, to me, it just makes the bike easier to clean after a salty day ride. And the beautiful carbon fiber. Everything glossy. I wish I could make the whole bike glossy. And one of my goals of the videos always is, when you're doing even a simple job like this, is simple, relatively simple anyway, you don't need any special tools, but you do always have, there's always some little thing that you, that, you didn't see that coming or something. And, and this was the biggest surprise of all, how difficult that was to get out. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put a little wheel bearing grease or something on that in case I have to take this apart again. But right now, it's time to head down and start getting these parts prepped up for paint. It's a beautiful painting day. A job this complicated calls for some extra coffee. It'll always make the job go a little better. So I'll probably hear from Turbo Steve how the decals are coming out or what, he, what his schedule is. We can finish this job. He can get that back, in, uh, back on the road again. So as I tried to show, taking these parts off the bike can be tricky. In fact, I wanted to show this. There's a little detent here. You have to be careful. Let me show it. You have to press this up. Don't just pull it out. You have to press that up. And that, when that goes back in, and this is the kind of things it's nice to know so you don't break the tabs, that snaps in. Then there's a rubber bushing up the top. Kind of nice the way it works out, to be honest. But anyway, first thing on this, as always, now a lot of, as we discussed on uh, question and answer a couple days ago, there's a lot of ways to prime and prepare parts, bulldog, all kind of systems. I like to use the old fashioned system. This is the real old school thing. Primer sealer and clean the part good, sand it with 400, kind of old school. And I've just had, it's the devil I know. Now, a couple of times, because this, these parts for sure have plenty of road grime on them and wax and whatever. So I want to make sure step one is I get as much of this clean as I can and then rinse it over in the slop sink. And get these parts as clean as I possibly can before I start sanding. I don't want any wax or grit or anything on there I can get off. The simple green works good. Crud cutter works good. And we're going to try to get a nice 
really nice shiny coat of gloss black on that. And I hope that's what I like. But again, the nice thing about this, if I don't, it's a half hour or so to take the parts off, paint them with flat black paint. God forbid, paint something with flat black paint. Now we really want to sand this with 400. Yeah, we got a piece here. And this is Merca. This is real good quality. 400 sandpaper. That'll be great for etching the plastic and it will get some self, some self sealing, self sealing. It's sealing primer on there. Not sealing like the ceiling, it's seal like, and not the seal with the ball on the nose either. So I'm going to have to just be real careful, get all the edges radius, all the corners nice and round, get a nice etch on everything, so that the primer, primer sealer, I love that, the primer sealer with the ball on the nose. Anyway, we will get this primed, and that other part I have to determine exactly how much of that you see. I don't want to make it that it ends at a, an awkward spot. I'll have to think about that. That's why I'm doing this part first. Very important, get all the edges radius. Now, I, I thought about this for a long time because I, we had originally, John even made a concept of this in silver. He made one with this in uh, blue. And I, I really couldn't decide, but there's something about gloss black. When I put those mirrors on the bike, I kind of thought, well, Everything I put on, it's gloss black. I never go back and paint it flat. Maybe this will be the first thing. I don't know. But And by the way, a lot of people don't even know the MT-09 has these little lights underneath the headlights. Like running lights, I guess they are. Kind of a nicely made front. That front end of the bike is the nicely engineered thing. It all comes off with just a few bolts if you ever have to service it. So... Anyway, we're gonna just finish this up sanded, get it all sanded, and take advantage of the fact this day looks like it's gonna be a great day. We should get the clear done today, have this dry overnight. And tomorrow, buff it out and put it back on, and we'll be back on the road again. Now, getting it sanded out with the 400, time consuming. I wanted to make sure every little edge and angle was taken care of, because if you leave sharp edges and you paint, especially if you put a lot of clear, this part will have a lot of clear when I'm done with it. That's where the paint tends to crack or chip from a little stone chip or something. So we're just trying to stack the deck in my favor, get it perfectly clean before we prime it, and make sure there are no little defects in the way the part was molded. It looked pretty good, so I was ready. Now before I prime this, I'll wipe it all down with some M600 degreaser. Get out our primer sealer. It is a plastic part, so... Uh, Primer sealer is my first choice on priming. Let's hope we can find a can that doesn't spit among our collection of bad cans there. We're going to use that up somehow. Now every step of the way, I try to look at the part from every angle, see if there's anything I want to correct or change or whatever before I put the primer on. And this part, by the, by the time I was done with it, was in pretty nice shape. And we're going to hope we get a good spray out from this can. We've got one left. Then we're going to have to get some more of it. This is, the main thing is that it's sealer. It's sealer. You want to seal that plastic from the thinner that's in the paint. And the objective is to get a thin coat of primer coverage, but not to put any more primer on that we don't have to. I don't want to use the primer for filler. The, prim the primer is only there to glue the paint to the plastic. Okay, our friend the turbo snail is going to make sure this dries up, no birds poop on it or anything. Now for this part, it's just a wild guess. I've kind of estimated, you see up to about here. I'm going to paint a little extra just in case, in case you do get to look in through the front. You don't want to see where that joint is. And we'll get this same thing as the other part. We have two parts to paint. The weather is absolutely perfect for this kind of painting. And we should have really good luck this afternoon with this. And just like the other part, most important thing, get a good etch on the part. And make sure every razor sharp edge, whether it's from the mold or the way the part is designed, no really razor sharp edges where the paint would tend to have a problem. Now I took a guess at where the back masking had to go, making sure I, I covered all my bases. It'll be way up under the windshield. I guess only the mice crawling around on the floor in the garage will see the joint. But I don't think it'll matter either way. It's, it's going to be fine. And these two parts, 
we took advantage of such a beautiful day for painting and we're wiping it down with the degreaser m600 i just was just loving the fact that we had a day that the wind wasn't 100 miles an hour and it was a big chance of rain or anything actually if this would have been a, just a beautiful day to work in a garden or something but the way it played out i wanted to get this done I wanted to try to wrap up these last few details here. I had some black already mixed. I don't remember what I was painting black. Oh, Turbo Steve's ports. And here we are, got the headlight, uh, the shell, and very thin. If you notice how many coats, you think that's 100 coats of paint? It's thin. It's like an airbrush. You almost don't see anything coming out of the gun. Well, that's, I want that paint to lay down and lay down as flat as possible. And in the final analysis, getting that paint on in thin coats, that's one of, one of the things you can stack the deck in your favor. You're not going to have a run because it dries just a little bit in between those coats. And it's going to need another coat, but even that just, just looked beautiful. And I like to look at it again from every possible angle. Look at it from the front, from the back, from the side. You can see my reflection in that. I didn't even see that before. Here's the part in prime. We got that all set to go and the back masking done. I'm looking for any little flaws, any little thing that's going to be a problem when I when I do paint it. Because these parts, when they're buffed out, I don't want to even see a speck of dust in them. And the, the same exact technique, thin coats, thin coats, nothing thick and watery and wet and drooly. And that really did come out nice, I have to say. Great weather for painting, too, today. And we're going to use the Gap Go Clear. Thank you, Turbo Steve, for donating the, uh, I don't know, a gun loader this into the project. But anyway, this is the key that I always use because I paint outside. Fast hardener. I always like to use fast hardener, no matter what clear I use. And I, I've had three or four good brands of clear in a row. This one is, is certainly one of them. So mixing up the clear four to one, it's a four to one mix. Stirring it, I have a steel drill bit that I stir, stir it with. And I always tape the top of the, the, uh, the gun so it doesn't drool and drip. And because of the really, really good weather for painting, this went off just about as smooth and effortless as you could, could paint anything. And I needed three coats total. I gave it plenty of time to dry in between coats since I had a good chunk of the day here to work on. And I kept looking at it out in the bright sun from every possible angle, even for the tiniest flaw, because I could still put a little extra paint if I saw something that, that I wasn't happy with. And as the day went on, the paint was just flowing out of that gun. This, this would be a great day to teach somebody how to paint if they had never held a spray gun in their hand before, because there was nothing that... that just was perfect it couldn't be any better and of course looking at the parts i put them out on the table i wanted to see them in the sunlight and then i let them dry in the garage boy they look they came out great and when i put the last of the clear on the parts i was just thrilled i just couldn't wait now to see that sitting in the sun cooking away and boy after this winter that we've had this this was a joy painting outside today yeah, three full coats, and this just couldn't have gone any better. The weather is absolutely perfect. That's definitely going to have to dry overnight now, and I don't think we're going to have a lot of dust to buff out of that. We'll have that all back together tomorrow. Well, this day ended on a really positive note, and it looks like this paint... It's going to dry up beautifully. Just, just a wonderful day for painting. Karen has some errands for me to do here, so I was very happy to get this done. I have the rest of the day to take care of the farm. And tomorrow, this will be dry. Buff it, then I'll buff out in 10 minutes. Beautiful. And we will be ready to snap it all back together again. So I hope I, put, I, hope I didn't leave out any steps here. Working on this front end is a little tricky. And believe it or not... If I had the manual, it would help, but guess what? I don't have the manual. <laughs> I got to figure out how to download that, uh, that thing off the internet that John already has the, the link, I think, too. Anyway, and I forget who, who sent us that. Maybe it was Stefan, but I don't remember. Anyway, but it is, I, it's up to me to go get it. But I find it challenging just to figure out how to do it 
without the manual, but it would have been easier with the manual for sure. Anyway, it's been a good day, and I love sharing a good day a lot more than a bad day. Now, this was just a great day, and boy, at the end of a day like this, you really feel, I feel like, like I'm really making progress on turning this bike into something that's going to be my own bike. I've, I put my stamp of approval on it, little one step at a time. It's taken me, this is over a year and a half since I actually got the bike as a birthday present for my 76th birthday, 75th birthday. I got don't add a year in there. And here we are. This is the day I picked up the bike. And I keep these pictures right on a very easy spot to look at on my computer. I look at these and I think, the day I picked this up, I wasn't even, I didn't even have the bike onto the trailer because I had never seen the bike and I had already bought it. I bought this bike sight unseen because that was the last of the blue ones in New Jersey at that point in time. I had to go down with Luciano to, to South Jersey to get it. And boy, when I saw it, I just was, my mind was spinning. Things I wanted to do to customize it. Get rid of that tail light, number one. Polish that exhaust. Get rid of that white fender and those white gray side covers. And one by one by one by one. And then what, what dominated the whole first year of owning the bike was changing the nose section, the nose section of the bike. Uh, and uh, some people like it, but you know, I wanted a, the, some kind of little piece of body work up there. It had that unfinished look, but it didn't bother me at all because I was challenged by this. And I really, really, I, I was obsessed with the idea. I was gonna turn this into a custom bike that I was gonna be really happy with. Because number one, it's easier to do this than when you have the perfect performance in a bike and all safety features and then customize it, then go the other way around. Buy a bike that looks cool and then try to make it fit your body and fit your riding needs and everything. But we started out pretty low on a totem pole here. It's a very inexpensive bike to start with, but it does have that performance and comfort and safety features that I really wanted in a new bike. Well, here we are after. That's kind of a quick before and after. And I never forget the difference between then and now. When I go out to the garage now, I get I go and look for my motorcycle. Not not the one I bought a year and a half ago. Well, it's going to be probably by the time this is done, it'll be a year and a half that I've had the bike. And twelve almost 12,000 miles. In fact, we're getting ready to do the oil change soon on it. But it has been a great adventure. The wheels, the the logos, the scoops, the little windshield, and now this final part today, well, I think one of the final parts is two or three other little things, but I haven't decided on them yet. And and I'm not sure I'll even have the time to do it because the, we're hoping the kids are moving into their place and they have details and clean up and stuff, and we've been spending a lot of time over there. So I don't have the time to, I have full time would be able to work here. And all of the little, the screening, and I just look at every part, polishing the exhaust, there's so many little details. It, it compels you to look at it and you, you start oogling it and then the stripe on a windshield and does this match and does it look better than Yamaha's design and on the, yeah, you go on and on and on. But it doesn't matter. In the end, what matters is it's now officially my bike. And tomorrow when I button up the little headlight covers around, I'll try to get some pictures and again, because this is the part I really enjoy, is the styling cues and trying to make this bike very special. And every year when I'm done with a restoration, I make a commemorative t-shirt. John Pothier always does the artwork. And this, this is one of my best ones. I am really happy the way that came out. But t-shirt, no t-shirt, ride, no ride, paint, no paint. The whole idea of doing this is to get out on the open road and that summer is just just weeks away now. We're really coming up on the most beautiful part of the year. If you don't live in this part of the country, you don't always suffer through a long winter and then a very iffy spring. And little by little, uh, the clouds go away and it warms up and the trees change. And uh, we do the final little touches on the bike and get it ready for the riding season. But this is a very exciting time of year to be a motorcyclist. I wake up in the morning and I the sun comes in the window and I just look out and I think, oh, great, we can ride today. I'll do this or that. And the fact that the kid's house came out so great, it's, you couldn't imagine in real life. And I will have pictures of it eventually in video. 
but they're still doing the cleanup and there's still a couple of details left to do there. But their life has been changed forever. And we've enjoyed having them live in a house with us and share our life. But the, the main thing is it's this time of year, what I'm trying to get across is we're looking at maybe six months of enjoyable riding season now where almost every day we'll be out on a bike, different bikes every day, different friends to ride with, different rides. It couldn't be a better life. I, I just, I, I'm beside myself sometimes. I enjoy shooting a video. I enjoy editing it. I enjoy sharing it with you. And I hope we'll see you tomorrow.